So let's refresh your mind on some of our concepts we've been working on. And obviously the first one we did was what is motion? How do you know something has moved? So, something's there, and you look at it later, and it's not there, but it's somewhere else. So, basically, motion is change in position. So, you don't actually have to see video. You can just see snapshots, and the background could be different. Um, delta X, delta Y, delta Z, if you just deal with the axes. So... Motion itself is just a change in position. Now, there's some differences between distance and displacement. And again, if we're here and we're going to show up over here, there's different ways that we could do that. So if we went here and then got there, that is actually different than just going straight line. One of those is distance, one of those is displacement. Displacement is actually the change in location. So that would be the red line. How far apart are you from the beginning? And the green line would actually be your distance. Maybe a better example is if you go around the block. You live here. And you go up here, you go around the block, and you come home. Your displacement is zero. Your origin and your end are at the same place. Your distance is one block. So, slight nuance to them. Speed, velocity, acceleration, all concepts dealing with motion. Speed and velocity are very similar in that they both have dis... Ugh, it's a horrible deal. They both have distance, well, uh, sort of, distance over time. That's actually speed. Velocity is actually displacement. So there is a slight difference between them. Um, for the most part, though, we will always deal with distance and displacement being the same thing. That we're always going to go the straight line path. So you're going to come up with distance over time, some matter. It's a change in position and a change in time. So it's actually motion is speed or it has a speed or velocity. So you could write the formula as V equals delta X over delta T. And we'll put funky things on it. We'll get to those in a minute, in case you don't remember. Acceleration, well, acceleration, there's actually three parts to acceleration. Three different ways you can accelerate. And most of you know that it's speed up, slow down, but some of you don't realize that turning is an acceleration. Change in direction. There's a reason that acceleration is that. So acceleration is a change in velocity in time. So actually turning is a different velocity. Um, difference between speed and velocity. Airplane pilot goes 300 miles an hour for an hour. Where does he end up? Uh, kind of matters if we told him which direction to go. That's also the difference between speed and velocity. Direction is involved. Very important things. What causes motion? We should probably actually ask what causes a change in motion. So if I've got something moving, well, how do I stop it? Well, i got to have something happen to it to stop it. So I've got to, like, push on it. Or I've got a, how do, I could turn it. Well, maybe we don't push on it that way. Maybe we push on it this way. 
that's going to change its motion. So we can have friction. Oh, friction and a push, those things are called forces. So forces change motion. Um, but something's got to happen with those forces. They have to be unbalanced. So think about a tug of war where everyone's pulling the same. What's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing's going to change. But if one pulls differently than the other, then we get a change in the motion, change in the position. Um, so forces have to be unbalanced. That's very, very key. Um, if I take this object and I push on it with 50 that way, and I push on it with 50 exactly that way, um, this thing's going to keep doing what it was doing before because the 50 down and the 50 up cancel each other. They're balanced. So you need unbalanced forces to change motion. So forces balanced, unbalanced, net. And that just means we're going to add them up. That's a sigma. And we're going to add up all the forces, I equals 1, 2, however many. If we add them all up, we can have, we can have 100 forces, and they could be balanced. They could all just counteract each other. Um, you think about a, a unit circle. You could have 360 forces, and they would all, if they're all the same size or opposing ones are the same size, if I have 0 and 180 being the same size and 90, 270 being the same size, they would cancel, and so they would be balanced. You need unbalanced to change motion. Now, if you only have one force, it by itself is naturally an unbalanced force. To be continued.